Hey everyone, I'm going to share with you my top nine dividend stocks to buy right now in July. Now, in addition to sharing with you my top nine dividend stocks, I'm going to reveal a little bit more information about each of those stocks and why I like them so much. Also, I'm going to discuss more broadly dividend stocks in general, why they've underperformed in the last month. You're going to be surprised, or you might not be, at the big factor that's causing dividend stocks to underperform in the last month. So I'll share with you my dividend stock purchasing philosophy. I'll share with you my favorite dividend stocks. I'll discuss a little bit about performance, how dividend stocks have performed, how my personal dividend stocks have performed my pick, my portfolio picks, and I'll round that all out by highlighting where I think these stocks will go for the rest of the year. So let's take a look. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, my first batch of dividend stocks here are Visa, Altria Group, Nike, and eBay. Now you'll notice there's a wide disparity in dividend yields here. Visa offers investors a dividend yield of just 0.76% while Altria Group offers a dividend yield of 8.52%, a big difference in dividend yields. Surprisingly, Visa is my top dividend stock to buy in 2024. I've had Visa rated as my top dividend stock all year, even though its dividend yield is much lower than Altria Group. And this is a good moment to discuss my dividend investing philosophy, my dividend stock strategy. I look for stocks that I feel can increase the dividend payment over the long term, and I value that more than I value the current dividend yield. And that's why I like Visa stock more than I like Altria Group, because Visa's business is likely to generate growing profits over the next three to four decades, decades. Whereas Altria Group, its business is flat to declining. It's in the middle of a big transition. And it's questionable whether or not its profits will grow, remain flat, or decline over the next decade or two or three. Whereas with Visa, it's more likely the company will grow its profits and thereby increase the dividend payout over the next three decades, or even two decades or one decade if your investing time horizon is shorter. Now, if you're an investor already in retirement and you're looking at current yield, then that's a different story if your time frame is not as long as my investment horizon. As always, I suggest investors do their own due diligence and consider if a stock is a fit for their personal portfolio. The next stock on this list is Nike, offering a dividend yield of 1.89%. Nike stock crashed recently following a disappointing quarterly earnings release, and that's brought the valuation down and the dividend yield a little bit higher, although it still doesn't offer a very high dividend yield. But Nike, just like Visa, I feel over the next two to three decades will increase its dividend per share in that horizon. And that's why I like Nike here as one of my favorite dividend stocks. eBay rounds out this list at a dividend yield of 1.97%. eBay only started paying a dividend a few years ago maybe five years ago, and it's increased its dividend per share meaningfully in that time. eBay operates an asset light business model, and so the profits the company generates, it can return to shareholders through dividends because it doesn't need that much capital to reinvest in the business. So when it does generate profits, it can keep giving it to shareholders. That's a unique, unique opportunity here, and I've liked eBay stock all year long. All right, the next group of five dividend stocks to round out my list of top nine include Target, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, The Walt Disney Company, and Caterpillar. And again, you don't see very high dividend yields here. The highest you see is Target with a 3.02% dividend yield. Then you have Coca-Cola at 2.99%. What all of these five stocks, dividend stocks have in common is my belief that they will increase their dividend per share over the next several decades. And these companies have strong relationships with their customers. All five of them do. They've been around for a long time. 
They know their customers. They know how to serve their customers efficiently, generate strong profit margins and profitability, and return a significant share of those profits to investors longer term. And that's why you see me selecting dividend stocks that don't have very high dividend yields, but it's because my investment philosophy focuses on increasing dividend per share over time. I want to invest in a selection of stocks whereby my monthly dividend or my annual dividend income might be $1,000 this year, but 10 years from now, it could be $5,000 and 20 years from now, it could be $25,000 and then 30 years from now, it could be $50,000. So that's what I'm looking for to start now to build dividend income for my retirement, right? So that's why my investment horizon, my investment philosophy go hand in hand. I'm looking to build dividend income. I'm not looking to generate current dividend income. And as I've said before, and this is a general you know, understanding of how to generate income. If you're looking to generate income tomorrow, that's a much harder task than if you're looking to generate income 30 years from now. If you're trying to create an income stream for yourself for the year 2050, 2060, that's a lot easier to do than if you're trying to create income for yourself for tomorrow. And that's true for investing. That's also true for your career. Given that long time horizon, you can plan, you can prepare, you can opportunistically capitalize on opportunities, and you can be patient and not go over yourself, not trip over yourself to try and take too much risk to generate income. Whereas if you're looking to generate income tomorrow, you don't have time to prepare. You have to take what you can get. And so it's a lot more difficult, similar to investing in dividend stocks. That kind of underpins my philosophy and my dividend stock investing strategy longer term. All right. I want to share with you the performance of my dividend stock picks for 2024. So in the first batch of four, Nike, I highlighted with the disappointing earnings release is now down 28.7%. It's my worst performing recommendation overall. Visa at 1.48%. Then you have eBay and Altria Group, which have delivered solid returns, 22% and 19% for Altria Group. I'm sorry, eBay and Altria Group, respectively. Now, these are total returns. This includes the dividend return plus the stock return. So it's a total return you would have earned by investing in these stocks for the year. Now, the next five have delivered a better performance. Target at 3.78%, Coca-Cola at 9%, Caterpillar at 12%, negative 1.77% for the Home Depot and 8.56% for the Walt Disney Company. Now, I also wanted to share my previous stock recommendation that I removed from the list, and that was Starbucks. I had Starbucks rated as a top dividend stock between December 31st and June 1st. So the performance during that time was negative 15.32%. But I'm not like other YouTubers that remove their negative picks and not talk about it ever again so that you're not aware that I ever pick losers. That's not me. I will share with you my losers as well as my winners and share with you the performance and their uh, returns. And so Starbucks was one of those picks I took Starbucks off because I didn't like what I was seeing in the business, not just because of the stock price, right? You notice Nike is still on my list, even though the stock price has fallen. The fundamental factors of Nike's business, I'm still confident about. Whereas with Starbucks, I began to doubt their ability to turn things around here in the next year or two. So I took Starbucks off my list. So if you compare my portfolio of stocks, which I will share with you the return. But this is what you would have gotten if you just invested in the S&P dividend ETF, the SDY. So far this year, dividends included, it's up 2.05%. So keep that number in mind. All right. So my portfolio of dividend stocks, including Starbucks, has returned 3.06% on the time I've recommended them. Now that's roughly 50% better than you could have gotten if you invested in the S&P dividend ETF where it returned 
2.05%. Okay. Now, in the last month specifically, dividend stocks have underperformed broader market indexes. I can share that with you. Here you can see over the last month or two, you see the dividend ETF has fallen from roughly 7.5% year-to-date returns all the way down to 2.05%. What gives? Why is that happening? And I'll highlight one primary factor because now the Federal Reserve had indicated it was going to cut interest rates three times in 2024. Moreover, market participants were forecasting the Federal Reserve was going to cut interest rates by six times in 2024. But those have changed. The Federal Reserve updated its prediction for 2024 it's now only forecasting one interest rate cut. And the market has adjusted and it also expects one or two interest rate cuts for the year. That's all had the impact of raising government bond yields. You can invest in a 20, 25, 30 year government bond that will deliver roughly 5% yield to maturity on your investment or 5% yield. And so government bonds are one substitute for dividend stocks for passive income investors that are looking to generate dividend yields. They can also choose government bonds to generate income in retirement or build income for retirement. And so as government bond yields have risen, that's made them more attractive. And so some investors have sold dividend stocks and allocated more capital to government bonds. I myself have been doing that as well. I've felt that government bonds have been attractive at current valuations, at current yields. And so I've been adding government bonds to my portfolio because of the attractive yield. And you're getting the asset class with the lowest risk out of any asset you can invest in. Theoretically, they're the lowest risk, right? With dividend stocks, the price could fluctuate and you could miss out on your money, you could lose your money. Whereas with government yields, government bonds, if you hold them to maturity, you're going to earn the promised return. There is close to 0% chance that the government will default on their debt. The US government will default on their debt. So you won't lose your money as long as you hold to maturity. So that's why dividend stocks have suffered at the expense of government bonds. All right. So there's my list of dividend stocks to buy. My stocks have outperformed the dividend ETF so far in 2024. And finally, dividend stocks have underperformed in the last month or two because government bond yields have increased, making them more attractive to passive income investors. Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.